In the post-war period, Jewish philosophy and theology grappled with the central issue of autonomy, particularly the conflict between traditional authority, based on divine command, and individual freedom. This dilemma was first addressed by liberal and non-traditional Jewish thinkers, such as Jacob Pechuchowski, Lo Silberman, Bernard Martin, Eugene Boritz, and Emil Fackenheim. During the 1950s and 1960s, they sought to reconcile these seemingly opposing forces. Orthodox theologians, like David Hartman, eventually confronted this tension as well, although the appeal of individual freedom took longer to gain traction within traditional circles. Seaskin's book responds to this problem by framing Judaism as a rational system of conduct. He focuses on the role of reason in both understanding God and more importantly, guiding human behavior. Seaskin interprets Judaism through figures like Maimides, Cohn, Spinoza, and Mendelssohn as a set of rational principles grounded in divine authority but which remain autonomous because of their rational nature. His approach is heavily influenced by Maimides and Cohn, who introduce elements of Aristotelian and Kantian rationalism into Jewish thought. Seaskin contrasts Maimides with Spinoza and Cohn with Mendelssohn, ultimately advocating for a rational, covenantal understanding of Judaism that emphasizes ethical autonomy. Seaskin's book is aimed at modern philosophers, who seek to balance the demands of human autonomy with the binding obligations of Jewish law. His work offers a nuanced interpretation of how rationality informs Jewish life and belief, and provides a compelling case for Judaism as a rational, ethical system. While Seaskin's arguments are clear and well constructed, his approach is not without challenges. Historically, many Jewish thinkers, especially from the rabbinic period and within the Kabbalistic tradition, did not embrace the rationalist views he promotes. Thinkers like Halevi, Nachmanides, and Kreskers were decidedly non rationalist as were those aligned with mystical traditions. A significant modern challenge to Seaskin's rationalism comes from post-Enlightenment thinkers, such as Buber and Levinas. Seaskin acknowledges this challenge, engaging with their critiques of rationalism, particularly Buber's emphasis on the I-Thou relationship, and Levinas's focus on ethical responsibility. Buber, influenced by Kierkegaard, Nietzsche, and other existential thinkers, rejected the rationalist tradition in favor of a more hermeneutical approach. His thought, shaped by Zionism, mystical traditions, and a reaction against Enlightenment rationalism, cannot be easily reconciled with Seaskin's vision of Judaism. Seaskin criticizes Buber's ethics, particularly the lack of concrete criteria for moral decision making in the I Thou encounter. He argues that Buber's view, which emphasizes the ineffable and episodic nature of divine human encounters, provides little guidance for everyday ethical conduct. Seaskin contends that Buber's sharp distinction between I it, objective relationships, and I thou, personal encounters, makes it difficult to derive any universal moral obligations from the I thou experience. According to Seaskin, Buber's framework fails to account for the ritual and ethical content that Judaism demands rendering it ethically vacuous. However, this critique overlooks the core of Buber's philosophy. Buber asserts that the divine human encounter 
imbues life with meaning, and that this meaning is expressed through actions guided by loving responsibility toward others. For Buber, ethical judgments are transcended in these moments of encounter, and the individual is guided by a spontaneous, yet deeply rooted, sense of responsibility. This approach, while less prescriptive than Seaskin's rationalism, offers a different pathway to ethical living that is grounded in existential experience. Rather than abstract rational principles, Seaskin also engages with Levinas, but his treatment of Levinas's thought is similarly limited. Levinas's philosophy, which centers on the ethical obligation to the other, goes beyond the realm of dialogue and interpersonal relations. For Levinas, the face-to-face -face encounter with the other is a foundational transcendental event that underlies all human experience. This encounter creates an ethical imperative that is not derived from rational principles but from the inherent responsibility one has to the other. Levinas's s ethics, while appearing heteronymous, actually constitute a form of freedom grounded in responsibility. Seaskin's rationalist framework struggles to fully capture the depth of Levinas's s ethical vision, particularly its transcendental and phenomenological underpinnings. While Seaskin's account of Judaism as a rational and autonomous system has merit, it faces challenges from both historical and modern perspectives. Many Jewish thinkers, both traditional and modern, have rejected or critiqued the rationalist approach in favor of more mystical, existential, or ethical frameworks, in particular, the post-Holocaust context raises important questions about the adequacy of Enlightenment rationalism in addressing the moral and existential crises of the modern world. Both Buber and Levinas, in their different ways, offer critiques of rationalism that emphasize the need for a more profound engagement with human responsibility and the ethical demands of the other. Seaskin's rationalist response, while coherent and compelling within its own framework, ultimately leaves open a deeper challenge. In the aftermath of the Holocaust, the question of how to ground ethical life takes on new urgency. Seaskin's return to a pre-Holocaust rationalism may offer some answers but it is not sufficient for those who seek a response to the historicity and complexity of modern existence. For thinkers like Buber and Levinas, the task is not to return to Enlightenment rationalism, but to engage with the profound ethical and existential questions that emerge from the horrors of the 20th century.